Since the dawn of Adam kind, the Bible has helped guide us and follow God's will. Originally it was written in the Hebrew language, and by the New Testament period it was Greek, and now predominantly in English. Along the way, along the translations, certain words have lost their meaning. It's estimated that the King James Bible has over 2700 translation errors, and any other versions don't fare much better in correcting those. While some words are difficult to translate, others have been deliberately twisted and completely mistranslated. Here they are. One of the most mistaken ideas is that most of the people in the United States and Europe, in fact nearly all the Christians in the world are Gentiles. The Greek word ethnos, which means nation, is all too frequently translated as Gentiles in the New Testament. The term Gentile is not used even once in the original Bible manuscripts, and there's a good reason for that. There is no such word in either the Hebrew or Greek language. The term Gentile is a Latin word, and it was first used in the Latin Vulgate by Jerome in the 4th century, and it meant of the same clan or race. So the original meaning of Gentiles does make sense. The Israelites had dispersed into Europe, and where did the apostles go to? Well, to their kinsmen, to their own people, to the lost sheep of Israel, to the Europeans. They obeyed Christ's command to go only to the lost sheep of Israel, and that's exactly what they did. Now around a thousand years later, after Jerome, the Latin term Gentile was suddenly changed to mean non-Jew. So not only do we have the wrong word, we also have the wrong meaning. The nations are the lost sheep of Israel, the nations that God promised Abraham's seed would become. You're not a Gentile, but rather an Israelite. Many times throughout the New Testament we get this term, this generation, seeming to mean a group of people only at that specific point in time. But the word genos should be translated as race, and not generation. When John the Baptist called his opponents a race of vipers, he calls them this because they were the descendants of the fallen angels. They were literally a corrupt race. When Christ declared that his opponents were responsible for the death of every prophet from Abel to Zechariah, how could he hold any person accountable for crimes they hadn't committed? He didn't, he was holding a race accountable for all their evil deeds. And when Peter called the Europeans an elect race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, he was repeating the exact words what Moses said to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. And this is because they were and still are the same people as in the Old Testament. The word Jew did not come into existence until the late 18th century, whereas all the occurrences in the Bible took place thousands of years ago, up to around the end of the first century. When it was first introduced, it replaced both Judean and Judahite. Nevertheless, it maintained and combined both meanings as one. A Judean would be any person who lived inside of the region known as Judea, just like an American can mean anybody in America which can be anyone from any origin, whilst the Judahite would specifically be a descendant of Judah, just like a Levite would only be a descendant of Levi. This issue causes a lot of confusion. Paul explained in Romans that he only cared about Israelites according to the flesh, meaning real genetic kinsmen, his own people. And in 1 John he explains, speaking of the Antichrist, that they came out from us, but they were not from us. Judea had a lot of different people at the time of Christ, and this should alleviate some of the confusion. Throughout Christ's ministry, he often referred to himself as the Son of Man, a sign of humbleness that God himself had come down to live and die just like us. But is there any more special significance to this phrase? Well, we must remember that God also called the prophets back in the Old Testament, such as Ezekiel, the Son of Man, where what has been completely lost is that the word man is almost always actually Adam. So what Christ is really calling himself is the Son of Adam, 
Now this must have vexed Christ's opponents as he called them sons of the devil. They were descended from Cain who came from Eve and that serpent, the Satan, the fallen angel. Anyone descended from a fallen angel is a devil and Cain was a devil just as Judas Iscariot whom Christ also called a devil. So the purpose of calling himself the son of Adam is to show that Christ only came for Adam kind, God's original creation. In today's churches there is no word more misunderstood than seed. Seed which comes from the word sperma can only be a physical descendant. Yet over and over we are taught it now means spiritual. That the serpent, Satan, the fallen angel, his seed is spiritual. That Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, their seed is also spiritual. That all the descendants of Israel are spiritual. Yet nowhere in the Bible is this ever stated. In Genesis 3.15 it makes it very clear there is a war between two different seed lines. Those of the woman, we must remember Eve was created out of Adam, they are closer even than a brother and sister. Eve's seed is also Adam's seed, whilst the serpent seed is the seed of the fallen angels and they are still with us today. Thanks everyone for 10,000 subscribers, I'll make a special video coming up next. Praise Yahweh and hail Christ.